What's up, black family? Hey, it's Nini here. Hey. I woke up and I saw this on my timeline from Sister Lisa Cabrera talking about um, J.P. Morgan Chase is abruptly freezing customers' bank accounts without a warning. After she's finished, I'm gonna tell her. I'm tell y'all about my situation that I had with the same bank. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank one of my subscribers, Tanya E, for this story. And this is a story I have done before in the past, you know, with different banks, freezing your account, freezing your assets, and then you have no way of getting to the money in your account. Now, a lot of times people can fight this, but it's going to take some time before they relinquish the bank account back to you or they may not do it at all they'll just send you a check in the mail ladies and gentlemen this time around it's jp morgan and company and it has come up in the news once again they are freezing accounts a lot of the customers are saying they are are using discriminatory practices against their clients and mm, mm, mm. wow i mean i hate to see this happen i really do i think that um i think that is evil to do that to people especially in this time you know we got the inflation and all these astronomical bills to pay I think that's a cruel thing to do to people. And don't be surprised that as things keep getting bad in America, you're going to see this way, way more often. So JP Morgan is persistently discriminating against its own clients and closing bank accounts without warning. This is according to Republican attorney generals in 19 states. Law enforcement officials led by Kentucky uh, Attorney General Daniel Cameron, of all people, sent a letter to J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon stating that the bank giant's practices goes against the company's own policy on equality. The letter, which has been published by the Wall Street Journal, states that J.P. Morgan has repeatedly discriminated against customers based on their religion and uh, religious and political beliefs. Oh, well, who knows? So it is clear that J.P. Morgan Chase and Company has persistently discriminated against certain customers due to their religious or political affiliation. And my question is, how do they know this about you unless you're standing in that bank running your mouth about what you believe in? And, you know, you know, sometimes it just pays to do your banking transaction and leave. But, you know, some of these people, they can't live a day without trying to be... <laughs> you know, shooting their mouth off and they want you to think they're bigger than what they actually are. You know, it's a lot of people out here, unfortunately, very vain. All right. <clears throat> so this discrimination is unacceptable. Chase must stop such behavior and align its business practices with an anti-discrimination policies that Chase proclaimed. Isn't this amazing? Daniel Cameron, you want to fight against discriminatory practices based on religions and uh, party affiliation, right? But you won't fight for Breonna Taylor. And that was your job to do that. It just amazes me. Uh, a dead black woman means nothing to him. 
fighting for a political party, that seems to mean everything to this man. Maybe if Brianna Taylor died as a Republican, perhaps he would have paid attention. So anyway, the Attorney General cite the sudden account closure of a religious liberty organization as an example of the bank's discriminatory practice. In May of 2022, Chase abruptly closed the National Committee for Religious Freedom checking account. NCRF is a nonpartisan faith-based nonprofit organization dedicated to defending the right of everyone in America to live one's faith freely. How do you believe in the right of everyone in America to be able to freely live, but you don't believe in reparations? I'm just curious to how you would answer that. So anyway, um, NCRF National Advisory Board includes Christian, Hindu, Jewish, and Muslim members. Okay, well, what's wrong with that? Okay, so those are the ones that are getting closed. So anyway, the NCRF inquired about the reason Chase closed the account. Multiple bank employees stated that the decision came from the corporate office. Specifically, NCRF executive director was informed that a note in the file read that Chase employees were not permitted to provide any further clarifying information to the customer. The Attorney General also said Chase has refused to accept proposals that would demonstrate its commitment to openness and inclusivity. They are calling on the bank to publicly disclose its internal policies on account closures, which the banks will never do. They're not going to do that. To be clear, banks generally have the right to conduct their business however and with whomever they choose. But banks does not have the right to mislead its customers. Chase cannot call itself inclusive, publicize that it oppresses discrimination in any form, promise to prevent discrimination against customers, and then refuse to commit to the most basic equality of treatment and fair dealing. You know, I know so many people that told me they had a horrible experience with Chase. You know, I almost got an account with them. In fact, I had, this was a couple of years back, I opened the account online and after I started reading some of the bad reviews, I never did fund the account. I let it go. I, I When I saw what they have done to people, there is no way I was opening an account at that branch. I absolutely don't trust them. But y'all, please tell me what you think. You know, they're whining about this. Look, you can go back historically and there are so many banks that have stolen from our forefathers and they never got their money back. Many of these banks, especially these big mega banks, Bank of America, JP Morgan, if you go back historically, they have frozen and refused to give our people their money, especially our forefathers that would put their money in these banks because uh, these mega banks were around back then. You know, I mean, don't assume they were not. They were must very much around. In fact, these banks were the ones that were mortgaging slaves. That's right. Okay. And you could, if you wanted like a certain amount of slaves, you could take a mortgage out on them. These banks were all around when that was happening. In fact, Chase, JP Morgan Chase was one of those banks that were heavily involved in slave trading 200 years ago. And they did admit that they accepted slaves as loan collateral and the bank 
ultimately ended up because so many of these um, folks that have pulled themselves up out of bootstraps and they don't need the government, so many of them defaulted on loans. The bank ultimately ended up with several hundred slaves, J.P. Morgan Chase. They ended up with several hundred slaves because them folks kept defaulting on the loans they took out to even have a slave. You know, the, the, the part of the history they don't ever tell you about. But uh, the Wall Street, you, you know Wall Street where the first commodity that was traded were slaves? Well, back then, they accepted thousands of slaves as collateral on loans. All right. And this was to help the plantation owners, especially in the South, in the early 19th century. And it wasn't just Chase Bank. It was not just J.P. Morgan. Citizens Bank. Now, I know many of you have seen Citizens Bank around. Citizens Bank is another one that participated in loans for slaves and um, and also plantations. They would finance those. Okay, so a lot of these banks that you may be banking at today took part in slavery. And we haven't heard them take much accountability at all over the years. Y'all, I didn't mean to get all into a history lesson on you, but I'm sure I'm not the only one that know this information. I know I got some sharp subscribers and many of you know the history as well. But please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family. Yeah, I had a problem with Chase. <coughs> When my grandmother died, my aunts and myself, we all got the same amount annuity check. And let me put it, put it on the table. Both of my aunties are fair skinned, green eyed women. OK. Now, we all um, we all went up to the bank, except for my youngest aunt. My other aunt had her check and they not only cashed and deposited my aunt's check without a problem. Oh, and mind you, all of them were from the same company, the same amount, all the way down to the cents. They took care of them as if there was no problem. I was one person behind my auntie. There was a white man between us because I got out of the car late. I was on the phone. And... It was a different teller because they call you, uh, you're in a line and then the window comes open. They call you up. I didn't get the same teller that my auntie got. All right? I had this red-faced, carrot-nosed bitch that took my check, looked at it, the number, looked at me, looked at the check again, looked at me, tilted her head and said, one moment, please. I already knew the fuckery was in, but I wasn't. I wasn't ready for what this bitch accused me of doing, okay? This carrot nose K bitch came back with the manager and said, we think this check is fraudulent. We think you printed it in your basement. They held up my money. My money was held up for well over a week. These motherfuckers closed my banking account that my grandparents got for me when I was 14 years old and got my first summer job at Bob Evans. Okay? Now, when it all said and done and the general manager saw that, wait a minute,
these are three checks from the three from from the same place, all the same amounts. Try to apologize to me. So sorry that that happened to you. It's like no, no, you did this because I'm dark and I'm a black man. That's why you did that shit. Refused to open up my bank account and shit, but my auntie opened up a bank account for me under her name. And we had to have these motherfuckers destroy the check. So now we have to have the, the annuity company that was handling my grandmother's account or estate issue me another check. I'll never forgive that. I mean, I'll never forgive the bank. I'll never forget it. Because, I mean, these motherfuckers made me look like a criminal. Bank full of white people. Wetback people. Indians. A couple of Orientals up in there. And these motherfuckers said that I printed this motherfucking check. Yeah, I, I was pissed off. I was well pissed off, but... They lucky I didn't feel like going off the deep end and shit because I could have went to somewhere and got me one of them things and went up in there and just sprayed everybody then set the motherfucking place on fire and sit and just wait to die. You do know you got niggas out here ready to do that to this motherfucking population that's so anti-black and anti-nigger. But that's the problem I had, Sister Lisa. Just because I'm a dark black male. Fuck J.P. Morgan Chase. 